the first category of biomolecules that we are starting with are carbohydrates. So first we will take carbohydrates. Now carbohydrates, they are called so because their general formula has a ratio of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen as 1 is to 2 is to 1. So it appears as if with carbon there is H2O that is water with it and that is why hydrates of carbon so carbohydrates. Hydrates of carbon and that is why they are called carbohydrates and the general formula is CnH2NON. Again this is similar to the ratio that we have talked of. Now these carbohydrates they are further classified into various categories depending upon the units. If there is only one unit present in it then we are going to use the term monosaccharide. Monosaccharides. And here we are introducing a new term saccharides. That means carbohydrates are called carbohydrates because their formula is like hydrates of carbon. And they can also be termed as saccharides because that saccharide word means sweet tasting. So they are also known as saccharides because they are sweet tasting substances. So if a carbohydrate is made up of only one unit, then it would be called monosaccharide. If it is made up of two units, we will call it disaccharides. If there are three units, then we can call it trisaccharide. But normally, three to seven unit uh, molecules or carbohydrates are known as oligosaccharides. And if there are many, many or thousands of mono units, then the term that we use is polysaccharides. Monosaccharides are like glucose, fructose, galactose. Disaccharides are like lactose, mannose, sucrose. Oligosaccharides like raffinose. And polysaccharides are like carbohydrates which are complex. That is cellulose, chitin, glycogen etc. We have to discuss all these in detail. Now we would take up the first that is monosaccharides. So we are now starting with the first category, monosaccharides. Monosaccharides means single unit. Monosaccharides may have carbon number 3 to 7. That means it can have 3 carbons, 4 carbons, 5 up to 7. So if there are 3 carbons, we call that sugar as triose sugar. If there are four carbons, we will call it tetrose sugar, five carbon pentose sugar, six carbons is hexose sugar and seven carbon is known as heptose sugars. So these names are given on the basis of the carbon numbers that they have. And by seeing the general formula, we can also write the formula of triose sugar. Triose would have C3, 3 carbons. H would be double, that is 6. And O again, 3. Tetrose would be C4, H8 and again O4. C5, or sorry, pentose would be C5, H10, O5. And this is like the most common one that we talk of, glucose or hexose sugar. So it is C6, H12, O6. This one, 7 carbon would be C7, H14 and O7. So on the basis of general formula, we again know the formula of these simple sugars. We will write now at least one example of all these sugars. And we will be studying the two types of monosaccharides in detail. Which are those which we would be talking about in detail? Pentose sugars and hexose sugars. These are the most important ones. So we will discuss these two in details. But let us write down at least one example of all. 
Cryos sugar, if you are able to recall what happens in glycolysis, glucose after a chain of reactions, it splits into two, three carbon compounds. One was glycerol dehyde, there was phosphate also, and other one was dihydroxyacetone. So those two are triose sugar. So here we are writing the examples. So we can write glycerol dehyde. That was phosphate, but simple glycerol dehyde can be written. Glycerol dehyde. And tetro sugar, one example is erythrose. Pentose sugar, we know many, that is ribose sugar, deoxyribose, arbinose. So ribose, arbinose, these are pentose sugars, deoxyribose also, the sugars which are the parts of RNA and DNA. Hexose sugars, our glucose, fructose, galactose, these are all hexose sugars. And heptose, one example is sedoheptulose. These are seven carbon sugars. So, depending upon the number of carbons that they have, we can divide them into triose up to heptose sugars. And as we said, we will talk about these two sugars in detail. We are starting with six carbon sugar because we are familiar with six carbon, that is glucose. And after glucose, then we will discuss the pentose sugars. So now let us take hexose sugars. Hexose sugars, the two most common examples that we talk of are glucose and fructose. Hexose sugars or rather in general the sugars can have either an aldehyde group or a ketone group. So they can have aldehyde or keto group. Depending upon this, they are termed as if aldehyde is present, that sugar will be called aldose sugar and if keto group is present, those would be called ketose sugar. So there are two categories. It can be an aldehyde group containing sugar or a keto group containing. Second important information about hexose sugar is that they are polyhydroxy compounds. Polyhydroxy compounds. That means there are many OH groups. Plus the formula we already know. So here we are starting with structure of glucose. Glucose is an aldose sugar. Aldose. That means it has an aldehyde group. An aldehyde group is always present on terminal carbon. Glucose exists in two forms. It can exist in open chain form or it can also exist in a ring form. And these two forms are interconvertible. Normally in a solution, open and ring form, they normally exist in equilibrium that is pretty much 50-50 and they are interconvertible. That means open can change into ring and ring can come back into the open structure. We will draw both these structures. Let us make these carbons 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Aldehyde group is always on the terminal carbon. So this is the aldehyde group. Between carbons, there are these bonds which exist and we have to remember that it is polyhydroxy. That means there are many OH. So this is H here, OH here. Okay, let us number the carbons first. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. On third carbon, the orientation of OH is different. And on all others, it is OH and H, OH, H, OH, H and H. Let us count whether we have six carbons that we can see from the numbering. Let us count the numbers of oxygen. One, two, three, four, five and six. Because formula is C6H12O6. So we have six carbons and six oxygens. Let us count hydrogens. One, two, three, 
4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. So this is our open structure of glucose molecule. Now as we said it exists in both the forms and these forms are interconvertible. So how is the ring structure formed? Ring structure is formed by formation of a bond and the bond is formed between carbon number 1 and carbon number 5. How is this bond formed? I'm going to change this structure a little bit. The bond is formed where hydrogen from here and OH from here gets removed. Let me remove this. In the form of water molecule. So H2 is lost. Now, between carbon number 1 and carbon number 5, there is only oxygen. Now, how is this bond going to form? Let us change the structure and then later we will draw the complete ring structure separately. This is carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Now, let us number them 3, 4, 5 and 6. Now, between carbon 1 and 5, 1 and 5, there is oxygen which is shed. If we remove this hydrogen from here and carbon 1 and 5 share this oxygen, what is going to happen to the valencies? One valency is here, this is shared with oxygen, the second valency is with carbon. What about this? Here, there was OH, it is gone. H anyways is here. So there is no problem with the valency of this fifth carbon. This water molecule which is formed, it is going to dissociate into H and OH and H is going to come here and OH is going to come here. That's how the valencies would be satisfied. But when the bond is formed between two carbons, those two carbons are not going to stay apart. They will come closer. And when they come closer, the structure that we get is the ring structure. So let me make the ring structure here. The structure is going to be something like this. Let us make the structure first. We will number the carbons. This is the oxygen that we are talking about. This oxygen is shared between first and fifth carbon. So this is carbon number one. This is two, three, four, five. And what is attached to fifth carbon is the sixth carbon. So sixth carbon is seen in the form of an arm extending. This ring is hexagonal ring. It is hexagonal in shape. But how many carbons and oxygen make this ring? There are one, two, three, four and five carbons and one oxygen. So this hexagonal ring is made up of five carbon atoms and one oxygen atom. That is how one oxygen atom. So this hexagonal ring has only five carbons which make the ring. When we are talking about the ring, we are talking about only this structure. Such kind of a ring is known as pyrenose ring. So pyrenose ring is hexagonal and it is made up of five carbons and one oxygen. So this is how the open structure changes into ring and as we said these are interconvertible. This bond which is formed between aldehyde and hydroxyl group. If it is between aldehyde of one molecule and OH from the other glucose molecule or any other molecule, the bond is known as glycosidic bond. The bond which is formed is glycosidic bond. And this bond is always formed with elimination of water. But here we will add a new term. We said glycosidic bond is formed between aldehyde of one and keep, sorry, aldehyde of one and OH of other compound. But if the glycosidic bond is formed between aldehyde and OH 
of the same molecule, then such a bond is known as hemiacetal. So hemiacetal is glycosidic bond only, but both the groups belong to the same molecule. But if we take a situation that glucose molecule, one glucose molecule, it's aldehyde bond, and other glucose molecule, it's OH. If that bond is formed, then we will simply call it glycosidic. This is also glycosidic because bond is between aldehyde and OH. But those the both these groups belong to the same molecule. In that case, we use the term hemiacetal. So this is how the glucose is. Now in the next part, we will take fructose and again compare the ring pyranose ring with the other ring which is formed by the fructose molecule.